What's up guys? Welcome to another video. Today we're gonna start taking apart this old dry unit. Um actually I'm just doing it step by step. Um I was about to start, but I, I forgot to get the camera. So I mean some of you guys might not have this book. You know, I mean the book's doing the thing thirty five bucks so far off the eBay. Or you can go buy it fifty bucks off a um, power driven diesel website. But the book doesn't really cost me. Like I said, I bought this book for thirty five bucks off the eBay. But um yeah, so I'm starting to take the overdrive section off um, since I have a little free time today. Um, I was about to record it for you guys. So, first step is remove the real bad step ring cover plate, which is this right here. Um, started taking the bolts off, that's why I realized I had my camera. But it's a T25 torch bit. Um, so, let's just let you guys know. So, once you get that off, I, like I said, I'm bagging and tagging all my stuff and pulling the shelf so when I start go putting this thing back together I have everything already set so yeah so basically this yeah it's a T25 torch bit as you can see right here if the camera focus okay camera won't focus but I ain't got all day waiting for that but um yeah so Got my bag already tagged and yeah, so come with two pieces, mine stuck together. So, alright, that stuff is done. Seal this bag all up. I usually put my socket because I mean, I don't really use it on any other component. So, if it's like a special socket like this one, um, I won't need it for anything else. I usually keep it in the bag so that way when time to put it back, I already have the socket already ready, ready to go. I, I guess that's how I explain it, you know, like, for example, like this one is for my draft shaft bolt for the rear. That's the only socket I'm using, so I, it's just left in it. All right, so it tells you to remove and discard the cover plate gasket. I just kept it. Um, I'm not sure if my new kit has one in it now. I didn't even check that. But step three, remove number 11. Thrust band is shown in figure 147. This is figure 147, so... Number number eleven thrust bearing assembly is number two hundred, which is that ring. So, uh, flip this up. And this figure. So, Trying to figure this out. Hmm. Oh, so mine came out already. That's where it is, right here. So this is number. Uh, this is the number eleven thrust bearing assembly. So let me go ahead and back that up real quick and tag that. All right. So next is to take the wire type snap ring, and this is this right here. I'm gonna bag it. All right, so we got this all bag. Set that right there. What's next? What's next? So, so next step: remove the overdrive clutch back for diesel engine with required six fishing and six steel plates as shown in Figure 150. So, so I guess we gotta start removing all these clutch clutch. Um, I don't really need them um, since I have a new one, but just go ahead and save them. I, gotta, I know I gotta get a bigger bag because they won't fit in the small bags I have, but um, they pretty toasty. I mean, we see some scar marks up there, but go ahead and start removing that. It says remove right here. Move the overdrive clutch packs for diesel engine with required six freshens and six steel plates as shown in figure 150. So pretty much all of that. And then we'll move down there while removing that snap ring and stuff. So let me grab a bigger bag and bag that. Alright, so we got all these bags. Man, some of these are toast. Like, look at this one. Man. 
Um, it was one of them that's real, really, really bad. This one right here. God, look at all them burn marks. So, no definitely time for a rebuild. Alright, so. Now you give it a GoPro. That's what I really need. So this thing, I can do this with two hands instead of one. But, alright. Let's go to the next step. So you remove the step plate. Um, it's in the bed with the clutches. I pulled that out. So next step is actually remove the snap ring, which is right here, as you can see. So go ahead and take that out real quick. All right, so next step is to turn the old dry housing over and release the ball bearing snap ring using snap ring pliers as shown in figure 151. So this figure 151 right here, so basically where that cover was at, you supplied to take off that snap ring. So let's turn this bad girl over and let's do that. Pretty much. Like I just did, I just break the snap ring apart, and yeah. Next step is oh, 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 next step is remove the old drive housing from old drive gear train as shown as 152. So we'll pretty much take the housing off, remove the snap ring from the output shaft that retain the ball bearing as shown in 153. And then remove the output shaft ball bearing as shown in 153. Simple. So pretty much. Off. Well, as you can see, someone did do some work because there's some alignment mark right there. So, uh, so took the housing off, and also tell you remove the smack ring from the overdrive shaft that retained the ball bearing as shown in 153. So, snap ring. So the ball bearing to output shaft snap wings and it's raining. Wow. So, so our snap wing. Where is our snap? Oh, right there. So that's our snap wing right there. So it tells you to remove that. Oh my god, I can't believe it's raining right there. It's been warm all day long and when it start raining when I start working the transmission. All right, so we got the snap ring out. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna go ahead and back this up real quick. All right, next it was brush to remove the output shell ball bearing, which is pretty much this that's moving around. So pretty much should just lift right up. Yeah. Gotta right, come up straight, straight up and. Yeah, so please be careful with these. These are easy to come off. Um, so just handle these as gentle as possible. As you can see, the ball is inside on the rollers. So, well, this one really got rollers, but you can you know what I'm talking about. So, go ahead and back this up real quick, and then we'll move to the next step. All right, so the next step is going to involve using a press and there's a spring in there. I think it's like, um, I think the spring compressed to 830, 830 or 840. But uh, let's see. So before we move on to the next step, caution. The next step in the assembly of the overdrive sluts involves compressing direct clutch spring. Like, yeah, like I just said, um, pretty used though, you know, the spring compressor tool. Um, the tool number is 6227-1 or a hydraulic shot press with, you know, a minimum travel of 5 to 6 inches. The press must also have a bed that can be adjusted up or down as required. Please release the clutch tension slowly and completely to avoid personal injuries. So, we do have uh, a shot press. Um, mine's is a 20 ton. It's actually inside the house. <laughs> uh, 
We just literally just got that thing. So I haven't made room out here in the garage yet. Um, not until we get this thing out first. But um, I set up in the house. So we're going to go ahead and use that to unspring, uncompress the spring. And take apart that rest of the overdrive unit. So this is little pictures for y'all if you want to see what the two actually look like. So, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start doing that. All right, so this is my 20 ton press that I just bought. As you, you know, like I said earlier in the video and previous the video, I said I don't have any room in the garage, so it's in the corner of the house that we don't really use. So I don't have the compressed tool, but I do have this uh, band puller. So pretty much, it I think it'll hold up to 830 pounds. So um, pretty much. The other one is literally the same thing but a little bit longer and has four legs instead of two. So what I'm going to do since this when you start compressing this part, this the center is going to raise up come through. So I'm going to cut off the little ledges so that way the center um, shaft can come out as we push this in. I did a little test like I'm going to show you guys real quick. Make sure this is locked as a demonstration. As you, so, as you see, or I haven't touched yet. So, you can see that the center shaft is coming up. So, it's not going to clear with these ledges, and so I'm going to cut them off, and so that way the center can clear. So, when we start pushing this down that you know we don't come into an issue so I think this actually don't work um, if it don't I like I said I'm gonna take my time doing it and yeah so let me list this real quick go right ahead I got the compressor running right now I'm blowing up air cut this off and then I record when we come back. Okay, so I just finished cutting it. <laughs> Say what? <laughs> so just finished cutting it. So that would clear as you can see. So I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, uncompressing this. Take the two rings off. It's one in one inside and one on the outside. Alright guys, so we got uncompressed. That was like one of the most sketchiest things I've ever done. <laughs> uh, but, look at all the clutches. But, uh, yeah, that, that was... Look at the spring inside. But this was literally the most sketchiest thing I've ever done, guys. This, man. So this spring, like I said, I think it said 830 pounds. I know, eight, yeah, 830. So, um, let's see what the next step said, you guys. Let's see. So, we undid that. Uh, so, slowly, we lose our clutch and hub. We just did that. Separate the overdrive. Direct clutch patch from the overdrive. Clutch hub is shown in figure 159. Pretty much what I just did, lift it all up, all the clutches and everything. And, I mean, that's pretty much it, man. Just telling you how to uh, assemble it. So, we'll start that. I'll probably start that tomorrow. Um, but I just want to show you guys how to take apart your overdrive unit, basically. Um, we'll do step by step. Um, like I said, this was a. What was this off of? I used for the Jeep. Um, Oh, the pitman, pitman, oh, man, puller. So, um, for the steering, that's basically what I use, and then just cut the flaps off. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit, get a little bit more clearance. But other than that, that's basically all that is, um, to do this job. And like I said, this is a 20 ton press from Harbor Freight. So, I mean, pretty simple, and pretty easy. Um, but we will start this on tomorrow make another video of how to pull it all back together with the power driven diesel um 
rebuild kit. And yeah, so see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.